I want to share with you some of the stocks I have in my ETF account and my high yield ETF account that I can pull the dividends out 100% right now today, two o'clock central on a Friday and live off the dividends because they are above my cost basis. This is Mike, the tactical stock scout. All right, all right. So first, the one I really had planned that I could do this with is Spy T. And we are this close, so I can't count it. I can't count it yet. Spy T is not above my cost basis. So if I wanted, if I had to, I would have to reinvest some, but I could probably pull out 50% of the dividends, but that's not the goal with Spy T. The goal with Spy T is eventually to pull 100% out. But right now, I could pull 50% out if I wanted to. Next, now these five out of my, this is just so incredible to me. Out of the eight funds I have, five of them, I can pull the dividends out on right now, today, or next week when they come. First up, Navidi. I, I can't believe this. I mean, this one wasn't, this is one of my high yielders. You know, I have two IWMY and Navidi that are gonna bring in a large amount of dividends. And um, the plan with those is to reinvest two thirds of the dividends and keep a third of it, right? Well, right now, because I dip by at levels on the chart, that keeps my average cost low. So now Navidi is well over a dollar on my cost basis. So I can pull out the dividends next week if I wanted to, which I'm not going to because I'm not retired yet. But if I wanted to, I could instead of reinvesting them. So Navidi, number one, as of right now today, I can pull the dividends out 100%. Pretty great. As a, as a high yield fund that I expected to have to put two thirds back in, to be able to pull 100% out, wonderful. Next, Old Steady Eddie. I don't know how you can go wrong with this one, and it hasn't gone wrong for me. SVOL. They've already paid their dividends this week. I could have pulled them all. Well above my cost basis. And SVOL is so easy to dip by because it trades in a wonderful channel. Super easy. All you gotta do is pull up your chart, pull up a year chart, a day, you know, each candlestick represents a day, mark your levels and buy at the bottom of the channel, bringing your average costs down. That way when it goes back up for many periods of the year, you can pull the dividends out 100% and it'll stay above your cost basis. Now look, this plan is my plan and, and what is best for my family. I know there's some people that, you know, they buy just because it's red and that's fine. That's your plan. There's some people that'll buy above their cost basis. It doesn't matter what your plan is as long as it works for you and your goals. These are just my plans and what works for me and my YouTube channel, so I'm sharing it. Okay, next, AMZY. This has always been one I have planned from the get-go that I think most of the time I can pull the dividends out 100%. There's gonna be other times when I have to reinvest 50%. And there may be times, depending upon market conditions, that I'm gonna have to reinvest two thirds. But right now, with AMZ, even with the massive dividend that they are gonna pay next week, it's still well above my cost basis. So I can pull for my plan 100% of the dividends out and live off them without hurting my share price. Share price to me is so important because it's part of my goal. I don't want to have my share price hurt. So I average down again, and then when it goes back up, I pull the dividends. Pretty simple. This strategy isn't something I created or something that I just pulled out of the air. It's been going on since the market was created, dip buying to buy cheaper to get your average price lower. Next, WiMAX. This has always been a goal with WiMAX as well. WiMAX is well above my cost basis. So again, 
the plan with WiMAX just because it's such a doggone good fund. The way Yield Max is doing this with rotating the funds continuously based upon performance. Now, I don't know if they do it personally or with an algorithm or whatever. It doesn't matter to me how they do it, just that they keep doing it. And it has just been such a strong performer. Look at it since its inception. It's really staying above $20 for the most time. Even during these market dips, it rises right back up. The way it rips back up is phenomenal. So WiMAX, pull the dividends 100% and live off them because again, it's above my cost basis. Now the next one is fairly new to me and I need to thank Joanna. Joanna, if you watch this, thank you. You talk about FEPI and you've talked about it for a long time. And let me, if you don't listen to someone like me very much you know, or at all, but you should listen to someone like Joanna who's actually living out this dream and will be living out this dream. When Joanna recommended FEPI to me, I, I took it serious and I've been watching it and comparing it and seeing how it plays out. What I really love about FEPI, now, what I really love about FEPI is how it drops hard. Now that may seem strange to somebody. Why do you like it when it drops hard? Because I'm a dip buyer. So when it drops hard, it also rises extremely fast. So this one for me is a great dip buy ETF. And that's what my account is based on. Things that will have a quick recovery. Even though they are covered call fund, these I'm speaking of, they all have a quick recovery. And so FEPI is just been phenomenal on its recovery, much like SVOL, much like WiMAX, and much like, and, and just like FEPI, and NVIDI. What a, you know, whether it's their synthetics or how they're placing their cover calls with NVIDI, I don't know, but it recovers extremely fast. And FEPI is one of them. Now, the only thing I don't like about FEPI is the price tag, which was $20, but it's not, it's, it's 50. But I, it has been great. Bought it on the dip, on the level on the chart, on the Qs or the NASDAQ, whatever you want to use, NDX, doesn't matter. They all move pretty much identical. Hit a level on a chart, bought FEPI. Average down when it hit another level on a chart, on FEPI. Now, it's well above my cost basis. And when the dividends come out for that thing, I can pull it. And what I'm liking right now about my portfolio, s -ball, different company, right? A different company that, that has it. Feppy, totally different company than s -ball. Now, the only thing is I'm heavy in Vidi, AMZ, and WiMAX, right? Those are all uh, Yield Max products. So I need, probably need to be more diversified when I find another product I like that is similar to these. Because that's really important to me. Not only is average price important to me, not only is pulling the dividends 100% as much as possible important to me in my retirement goals, so is having a diverse amount of different companies that, that are working these products. Because you never know as much as I like yield maps, as much as I like defiance, and right now rec shares and, and simplify with s -ball, anything can happen to any of them, right? So to safeguard my family, I want diversification between companies. Now, you're gonna see a lot of people on YouTube talk about how horrible these funds are and, and just how they're, they're, some of them said they should be illegal. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to tell you about that, but right now, if I can pull 100% of the dividends out and it doesn't affect my share price, I'm extremely happy. And I, I couldn't be happier right now. Now, what's gonna happen when the market goes through a corrective measure? That's gonna be a good test and I, and I can't wait to go through that. But I'm kind of excited for when that happens so I can continually dip by these funds 
and then with funds like Feppy, Wimax, and Esfall, I know they will recover. So dip buying is gonna be extremely important and extremely opportunistic for me. Hope you enjoyed the content. To all the slugs, much love. This is Mike, the Tactical Stock Scalper, out.